Hello everyone, Giant T here, and welcome to the finale of Persona 4 Arena. So real quick before I uh, hop into the story proper, so it dawned on me that the credits for this game, or for Persona 4 Arena, aren't in the, the theater for uh, Ultimax here. <laughs> so I, I, I thought it was going to be like a day-long thing of like playing through all the stories in Persona 4 Arena to get the credits, turned into a 40-minute little uh, bout from booting the game up to getting you, Chie, and Igus' cliffhangers done, Labyrinth's story, and then finishing you's story, it was like 40, 42 minutes after the credits. And that's with like a pee break and some small breaks to text people, so that's that's pretty good. So, after Elizabeth's story, we will enjoy the original game's credits, so I can talk about it, of course. And I'll uh, also so show some differences towards the end as well, the, or at least, I don't know, at least the versus thing. Anyways, Elizabeth, what has she been up to since the events of Persona 3? Let's find out. Within the endless darkness are scattered countless bright lights, like a nebula. But those lights are not stars. Each one is the light of life, the gleam of man's souls. This is the world inside people's hearts. A place where every human's consciousness is connected and can be traced to their origin. Every memory since the dawn of man, and even those on the ladder of its evolution, slumbers here. Some think of this place as a sea, and they may be correct. Depending on how deep you go, you may see this world's endless landscapes and innumerable faces. Where I stand now is one of its furthest depths. A domain that has existed far before life became sentient or even took form. Here, there is only the darkness of death and the radiance of life. I come here at times, for a very important objective. Suddenly, a patch of the darkness surges and undulates. The pitch black substance swells with a tar-like consistency and quickly takes the shape of a giant arm. My, it's rather stout compared to before. But just as good and evil are products of man's heart, there is a negative force here in the sea of souls that tempts man to corruption and destruction. Though one person's malice may amount to little, there are billions of people in the world. It's actually common for monsters capable of destroying mankind to develop without anyone realizing. This is one of them. So yes, if you've uh, played Persona 3, the answer, this is a familiar shape, isn't it? Though it was only an arm at first, it quickly develops into an enormous human-shaped torso. Even in this space where up and down are fluid, its resentment-filled roar causes the air to shake. The monster raises an enormous arm towards the heavens. Its destructive power could tear down mountains. But it suddenly stops. Something is blocking its movement. I am, to be precise. You might think I'm nowhere on the scene. In truth, even the monster may be thinking that. But I'd like to direct your attention to the fingertips at the end of this giant arm. Closer. Uh, even closer than that. Uh, keep going closer, all the way to the index finger. There. Do you see me now? Have I forgotten to introduce myself? My name is Elizabeth. The only thing missing is, you may be wondering how I got myself in this situation. Uh, I fix my gaze upon the two lights that seem to be the monster's eyes, but it twists away, trying to resist. <sighs> Do you wish to behold death that much? <laughs> I grab the monster's index finger. And in one motion, I flip its immense body and throw it into the air. The monster cries out in agony and the area quakes again. Oh dear, it seems it won't be easy for one of this size. I cannot damage the world of everyone's hearts, and I hesitate to make a scene in the real world either. Time for a change of scenery. I open the elegant grimoire in my hand. A large blue magic circle forms behind the throne monster, swallowing the gargantuan figure. I follow it in. Continual, turbulent streams of light and darkness flow past the monster and myself. Eventually, I speak up. We will soon reach our destination. Another magic circle appears in an altogether different kind of black void than the one we came from. The monster is spat out there, and when it collides with the surface, a tremendous cloud of dust rises. I emerge from the magic circle second and rise into the air. On the horizon beyond the monster, I can see a deep blue sphere. Oh, you know, just casually going into space. Yes, this is the moon. Now, I had 
promise to show you death. Your fate is in the cards. A figure appears behind me, bearing several coffins. The god of death, Thanatos. What do you think? The light of the star shines off its drawn sword and gleams bewitchingly. Was it to your liking? Well then, farewell. It flings the sword down at the monster's head. Against its fearsome size, the sword is barely larger than a needle. But the sword's merciless sharpness pierces far beyond the blade's length. The monster's body slices apart like wet paper. With a final death cry, the monster slowly dissolves and evaporates as black mist. A deafening silence returns to the area. To break the quiet, a tune plays on my lips. Velvet, oh velvet. I create another magic circle in the air and step through it. I shouldn't remain long in this world without any real objective. This is not the world I belong in after all. My master has a large nose. I was once a resident of the Velvet Room and served its master. The dark blue clothing I still wear is from that time. All the residents have their roles, but they are also on a journey. We help our guests grow as people, and through the help we offer, we come to understand the ultimate question. It's the fundamental question of, <laughs> question, who are we? Thinking back on it, I spent so many days like that for such a long time. I had thought that it would be impossible to change. But two years ago, I finally reached my answer. Well, not in my playthrough because I didn't do that fight because that fight's just annoying. One's identity cannot be sought out, but must be forged for oneself. It's something you build little by little. People call the freedom to do so potential, and by mastering it, people develop their unique identities. That is the understanding I came to. So it seemed to me I should believe in my own potential and wander in pursuit of my desire. It wasn't a hard conclusion to come to. That is why I abandoned my assigned role and departed on my long journey. I have set an objective for myself. To defeat the monster I fought a moment ago once and for all. I vanquished it then, but that is only temporary. It'll surely resurrect within the year again. And I'll go through today once more. That monster was born from the twisted wishes arising from the lack of substance in people's lives. It slowly stagnates and, sleep, and sleeps, seeps out. If this is life, then bring on death. Desires like that are what give it power. And that giant black arm tries to free death from its prison. It can never be left to act on its aims. But as long as people continue to wish as they do, the foul feelings and congeal, uh, will congeal and it will revive endlessly. To truly defeat the monster would be to change the very souls of the people. That cannot be done no matter how much one improves their skill in battle. I do not currently know how this goal can be attained. It may be that no one in this world knows yet. Some new and unknown miraculous power will most likely be required. That is why I wish to travel as far and wide as I can to broaden my horizons. Since I have only interacted with the guests of the room, I'm sure the scope of my knowledge is far inferior to a single human's. But there are in infinite places for me to explore. I'll travel to each one and satisfy my natural curiosity. Now, that's why I've come here. A double check on the danger scale situation that I just recently discovered. I place my hands on my hips in what I believe to be standing firm. Before me is what seems to be a replica of a building in the real world. I sense multiple Persona users gathering. It's once in a blue moon that one discovers a place like this. I'm sure I can learn some interesting things here, or something along those lines. In any case, I, Elizabeth, can scarcely keep myself from getting involved. For someone with a physical form to step into the realm of the mind would be for them to enter an even more abstract place in the Velvet Room. Normally, it would be impossible, and even if it were, it would be very dangerous without a firm will. For it to occur at all is intriguing enough, but on top of that, these people are mainly Persona users. And not just one or two. There is no denying that something truly extraordinary is happening here. Broadened horizons aside, I can't resist taking a closer look. When I get closer, I see a nameplate reading Yasugami High School at what seems to be the main gate. Hmm, this building. Is it a school? The school building before me looks aged and I narrow my eyes. It seems somewhat old-fashioned compared to the school I have experience with, but it has its charms as well. This is what they call animalist aesthetic. 
animalist? Animalist? Bestial? Anyway, something along those lines. There are bizarre decorations as far as the eye can see inside the building. Was this school always thus adorned? These decorations... Oh, could this be the fabled school festival I've heard tell of? A festival is where one toys with the lives of goldfish in a scandalous game. One can also enjoy a combat simulation with close-range shooting tests using sniper rifle fire into the interior of stalls. Ooh, I'm starting to get excited. Looking up, I spy a large sign done in vibrant colors. B1 Grand Prix. Could this be a fighting tournament? <gasps> this isn't why the Persona users are gathering, is it? No sooner do my suspicions arise than I sense the first presence within the school and turn towards it. Come, challenger! I wave my arms about in anticipation. But something seems a bit odd. Hmm, that lady over there. Is she not a Persona user? Hmm. Regardless of that, I sent something out of the ordinary. When I close my eyes, I can tell that, the while, that while she may appear to be a human girl, something about her is amiss. I sense an unnatural disconnect from her memories and consciousness not seen in most people. Is she truly human? Now that I'm here, I can sense powerful commands gathering one by one. If such power were to be used to its fullest in clashes of skill, the result could be life-threatening. This place is not meant for such a girl. If she were to be drawn into this, then in the worst-case scenario... Were I still my old self when I only lived to play out my role, I would leave her be. But I am different now. I make my way towards the girl. As I approach her, I begin to hear voices. It seems that she is calling herself a student council president. I stride down to the end of the hallway where she's walking directly into her view. The girl gives me a slightly questioning look, but no more. She comes towards me guilelessly. Hey, excuse me. You got some reason to be at our school? Up close, I can tell at once. There's no doubt that this girl is not human. Yet she seems to be under that impression. The original residents of this place seem to believe that she is as well. But of course, that's impossible. The disconnect I sensed earlier must be related. Could someone have tampered with her memories and psyche? No matter how unusual her circumstances, such extreme gaps in awareness are no more f or no mere figments of the imagination. It's possible, but normally those would be dis those with a distorted view of reality have equally distorted emotions, and I have equally distorted uh, reading comprehension and speaking skills. Never gonna get better. It's the finale. I'm not better at this yet, and I do not sense that in her. Her emotions are in balance. Only her memories and awareness fall short, like a, uh, oh god. I, I'm just, a corpse to ballet? That doesn't, I feel like I shouldn't add the S. But I don't know, is it like, you know, coup de ballet or whatever, even though it's spelled like that? Anyways, uh, falling behind a soloist. I fix my gaze upon the girl before me once again. If she did not come here of her own will, then the events here may be more sinister than I imagined. Are you sure this is how things should be? Huh? What are you talking about? I am a wanderer who only stopped here because I sensed great power gathering. I am in no position to give advice, but, um, this place will soon be caught in a bit of a fracas. If you continue to avert your eyes from everything, I think it will have an impact on your life in the near future. My, my life? What you choose is up to you. But I believe there are factors preventing you from making the right choices at the moment. I couldn't bring myself to just stand by and watch as you lost your life before my eyes. That is why I came to you, so I could give you one last chance. She has most likely forgotten who she is. I sense something shining, slumbering deep in her heart. It's the glow of a bond. No one who has been a resident of the Velvet Room can mistake it for anything else. Before she forgot herself, she must have had strong feelings about someone or had made a promise to them. But I'll leave it to her to remember what it was. I hold out the Persona Compendium as if handing it to the girl and open its pages. Light streams out from, from it and washes over her. The light dispels the girl's false image, the illusion that made her seem human, though she is not. Huh? What is this? Her true form is revealed as a gleaming mechanical body. 
Her arms look as if steel plates are covering them. The girl frantically pulls at them to try and tear them off. It, it won't come off! What gives? My, what a robotically cool body. It is apparently meant for battle. Hey, you! What did you do to me? Nothing in particular. Well, well. Considering that you are meant for battle, I shall briefly be your opponent. During that time, why not think back about who you are? Uh, huh? My opponent? Most likely, I will not get through to her with words alone. Only by being forced into a confrontation will she finally be able to understand. She already knows how to use the steel limbs which she's supposedly never before seen. And away we go! So yeah, this one kind of speeds along now, doesn't it? <laughs> 16 minutes in the recording, already on the first fight. And this ain't necessarily a long one either. Oh no, you know, I was sitting there laughing because like I was having a really easy time in Persona 4 Arena when I was getting my footage. It was against Elizabeth, who was just absolutely fucking me up. Uh, and I was like, oh, well, it's funny. That's, that's not, like, I've been having such an easier time in Ultimax. Apparently I'm now being made a fool of as I lose like half my health instantly. Alright, so I'm assuming that she also has a final smash of sorts. Also, I should really just be, like, grabbing people and just <laughs> making them fear or whatever. Nice. Uh, what, what, what's a spell? I don't get a spell. At least I, I didn't hit it anyways. The girl collapses powerlessly. I use a soft touch during the battle. She should have sustained no injuries. Probably. Still, the girl does not stand back up. Apparently due to mental rather than physical stress. Her own arms and legs had turned metallic. Yet in the heat of battle, she was able to use those foreign appendages with ease. If she truly thought herself to be human, that would have come as quite a shock. That should be enough. I'm sure you realize now that you are not human. There must have been an important promise that could only be kept in that guise. That must have been your reason for living. Whether it's worth losing that or not, I ask that you give it serious thought. An important promise? My reason for living? Her potential will become unlocked through self-reflection. That was how it happened for me as well. Now, it seems the tumult of trials is about to begin. In which case, I bid you good luck. I close the compendium in my hand and the worn pages rustle as they meet. By the time it shuts, I am already far away from the girl. In my absence, the illusion is again in place, giving her the appearance of a human once more. She may consider what happened to be a daydream, and that's quite alright. My intention was to give her an opportunity to awaken to the truth. What she eventually decides is up to her. But that aside, there's something else on my mind. The girl I fought looked human but wasn't. It's rare for even one such as I, with an unimaginably long lifespan, to meet someone like her. Yet she is the second such person I have known. The other was also a guest of mine once. She too resembled a human girl. I can sense her power somewhere here as well. Most likely, she's here for reasons having to do with the girl I met. What an intriguing event. More so than I had first imagined. Though I came here on, on a mere whim, this trip may be unexpected fruit. Perhaps I'll discover something important. My interest peaked even more now. I decided to go further in. When I do, the bustle of voices reaches my ear. Is that a cheer? One of the monitors nearby turns on after the cheer dies down. It's showing a girl in a school uniform. Ladies and gentlemen, is everyone ready? It's time to get our program started. I, Bissette, will be your commentator. Please, hold your applause. Oh, you're too kind, you're too kind. Well, with things starting to heat up now, the General has a few words for you. The mic's all yours, sir. Next, a person who seems to be the host takes the girl's place. Actually, the person may be incorrect. That intriguing fluffiness and tantalizing round body. <laughs> well then, I'm proud to announce the opening of our very own P1 Grand Prix! Presenting the manliest of all men! This 
This is more of a to-do than I thought. I keep watching as the video with some upbeat music plays. Hmm. Is this an introduction to the contestants? A number of girls and boys are introduced at a steady pace. I haven't seen any of their faces before, but they all appear to be Persona users. Each one of them is tagged with a mocking epithet. The carnivore who's discarded womanhood. The blood-curdling beefcake emperor. The sister complex kingpin. Are these signs of their willingness to cast aside their pride in pursuit of victory? I wonder if they're not casting aside a little too much. This is a rather novel idea. There's no denying that those of power are gathering here for the tournament. The video comes to a close. Since I came here on my own whim, I am obviously not featured in it. How unfortunate. <laughs> I catch myself pouting my lips. Mm. Should I officially enter this as well? Oh, but if the manliest of all men are the ones called for, I cannot participate. Then again, I distinctly spotted a woman or two in the introductory video. Then I shan't concern myself with such trifling details. I shall soldier on. The next time the host appears on the monitor, I will make my ent entreaty. If he turns me down, then I shall resort to force. Very good! My mind made up, I begin my walk through the school. Battles, battles, oh where might I find a battle? I look into a window nearby. Aha! Oh my! The host himself is before my eyes! Before I realize it, I'm already in motion. Pardon my dynamic entrance. S someones here! Mm? Looking around, I see a piano and portraits of famous composers lining the walls. I see. This must be what they call a music room. Please forgive me for startling you. Ooh! Who are you, miss? I am Elizabeth, a mere elevator attendant. Albeit one who is currently utterly neglecting her duties. An, an elevator attendant? I don't believe it! I'm having culture shock! I wish Juness's elevators had such beautiful attendants, too! Excuse me, but may I ask your name? Teddy! Doi! I'm sorry. Would you mind repeating that in human language? I was saying it normally. Teddy is my name, and I'm a proud bear! I see. Teddy Bear. You have a rather creative flair to your appearance. I wish you'd say cute instead! Hearing a pretty lady like you say so makes my heart skip a beat! Watching him, I cannot restrain my curiosity any longer and prod his soft fur with abandon. Huh? What, what are you doing? Hmm. This seems to lack ventilation. How does he breathe in there? Oh, there's a zipper. Stop! I'm ticklish! Oh no! No opening! You're embarrassing me! Oh, please forgive me. Curiosity almost killed the bear. Huh? What were you planning on doing to me? You're even a tougher customer than the kids at the food court, miss. When I step away, Teddy Bear lightly smooths over his fur to try and regain his composure. Oh, I had forgotten what I originally meant to ask because of your fine coat of hair. Teddy Bear, though I am a woman, I wish to partake in this Grand Prix. Huh? I can't help you with that. No. Oh. But are you not the host shown in the introduction video? It's all a huge misunderstanding! That guy's an imposter! <laughs> Won't you hear me out? It seems he's faced with some kind of dilemma. I decide to lend an ear to Teddy Bear. He animatedly describes his circumstances, but his arms and legs are too short to illustrate his point. His mannerisms are so peculiar that understanding is an uphill battle, but in the end, I grasp the basics. I see. So you realized that something was amiss and came wandering in here yourself to investigate. But you fell into the imposter's trap and couldn't do a thing until a moment ago. You have my deepest sympathies. Do, do I really? Anyways, everyone else is on the contestant list while I get the cold shoulder! <gasps> is that so? Then, since we are both outcasts, let us participate of our own accord. Our own? May I request a match from you? That makes no sense at all! What, what do you mean? Ooh, maybe a hot and heavy struggle with all kinds of clinches and holds? A one-on-one -on -one battle to the extreme. That makes no sense! W -w Wait a second! You look a lot stronger than me, miss! Oh, don't be so modest. No, no, 
no, I'm really not! I'm very sorry, but the deadline for submitting a forfeit notice has expired. You're not sorry at all! There are things I can't do, you know! <gasps> oh, but on the other hand, if I can try scoring with you later, I might rethink this. Scoring? I do not understand the term. But if that is your stipulation, why, I accept. Oh! You accept? Woohoo! I'm ready to go whenever you are! That is, if you're still alive after me. Uh? Well then, here goes. Your fate is in the cards. I take my fighting stance. Ah, settling matters through a show of force is simple, straightforward, and so beautiful. All right, Teddy, time to die. Are you ready? Because I know I am. All right, we're going we're gonna to try to get that uh, good old final smash this time. It seems like, I don't know, maybe it's just her attack. But it, it, it sounds like static or something. Anyways, I, I, ooh, I keep using SP. I mean, given she kind of just charges SP like crazy. I could also let Teddy, Teddy, attack me a bit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, beat me up, Teddy. I'm trying to get that SP. Yes, this is all good. This is all fine. Okay, now we have to figure out if this is an in-air or not. Uh, ooh, when opponent is attacking... So let me just read that description as it goes by. A counter move that activates are taking three hits. Automatically defeats the opponent if... It connects. Please don't hold back. Oh, come out. Oh, fuck. They're really good at like doing two attacks and stopping. I mean I have uh, not that many chances to show this off. Otherwise I'll have to hop into like an actual like a arcade match or something and then try to do it then. The road to dating is steep. <sighs> With an exaggerated groan, Teddy Bear collapses. Or rolls down to be more precise. Teddy Bear, you truly are an intriguing creature. Hearing this, Teddy Bear springs to his feet. <gasps> are you interested in me? Though you aren't human, you fight against your fate and wish to be with humans. I have witnessed one other case who bore such a fate in the past. Huh? You made a choice and decided how you wish to live. That is marvelous, Teddy Bear. Marvelous? Me? D does that mean you're still okay with me trying to score with you? That is not what it means. And Teddy Bear loses his balance for some unknown reason and falls over. No! The way you shoot down my attempts reminds me of Yuki-chan. Yuki-chan? Is this an acquaintance of yours? Yuki-chan is a very precious friend of mine. You have friends. Actually, everyone who is in that video are my friends. But I can't forgive them for having all the fun. I'll make them buy me a tasty treat for this. I see. May I ask you something? Who would you consider the strongest among your friends? Well, Sensei, of course. He's the manliest of all men! Sensei... If I recall correctly, that is the name of a governing class within a school, wielding the power of life and death over its students. Yes, that does indeed sound like the name of a strong warrior. Sensei's our leader! He sounds strong. But he seems to be unconnected to the former guest I am searching for. But as Teddy Bear speaks of his friend called Sensei, he wears a beaming expression. They must be connected with a truly strong bond. Inwardly, I am surprised. Though he is adorable, this Teddy Bear most likely used to be something similar to a shadow. I am very curious about anyone who could form a bond with such a being. Thinking about it that way makes me interested in him as well. Oh, that was quite helpful. Thank you. Once the tournament's over, you should come hang out at Juness sometime. Juness? Um, it's a place where Don Yosuke and I work. It's huge! You can eat food there, and they have candy, toys, and sexy bikinis, too! <gasps> what a paradise on Earth! It seems there is still much I do not know about in your world. Well then, if you'll excuse me, I must get going now. Be careful! I bow politely. Teddy Bear waves back with a big smile.
Now, though I decide to participate on my own, how should I proceed from here? I don't have a good understanding of this building's layout after all. I try going in and out of the building to test various paths, but I don't get anywhere. Hmm. It may have come to this. I rear back my head and inhale as deeply as I can. And then... Bring out the next opponent! Hmm. No one heeded my call. I suppose repeating that line isn't enough. My shoulders sag slightly and I concentrate on the area nearby. I sense an unexpected presence. Ha! Ah, there is someone closer by than I had expected. <laughs> what a reunion this will be! I'm starting to feel tingly. There is no need for me to keep searching for an opponent, since one is already nearby. I trace the presence and proceed down the hallway. When I reach what appears to be an entryway, I can hear what sounds like voices quarreling. One of the voices is Teddy Bear, or rather, the sham host, General Teddy. I take no joy at all from your praise. As I move forward, I find myself breaking into a run. Soon afterward, the voice's owner enters my field of vision. Just as I thought. An unmistakable figure. She's a guest I hosted in my life as a resident. If I recall correctly, her name is Igus. Upon closer inspection, she is aiming her weapon at General Teddy on the monitor. Pointing your weapon at a monitor is very scary. But anyway, your next opponent is... Ah! If I don't act now, the match will start without me. I must prevent General Teddy from speaking for the time being until my business is completed. Again, before I realize it, I'm already in motion. Oh no! Pardon my bold entrance. Huh? Oh, the monitor's completely shattered. Who would do such a thing? A strange intruder has shown up. Oh my! I thought we were having a touching reunion. How unfortunate that you would refer to me as a strange intruder. A reunion? I don't recall ever meeting anyone so odd. She who governs power. Does that ring any bells for you? Huh? Wait. Are you the one I met in that blue room, then? Your entrance just now was very different from how I remembered your behavior. So I didn't recognize you. But you're... Eridanus' son. Hmm. No. Eli... Elixir? Erengi? In any case, I never dreamed that I'd meet you here. That goes for myself as well. It's been a long time since I saw you. But why are you here? What about your duties of governing power? I am currently in gross abandonment of my duties. That was... a very straightforward answer. Considering the circumstances here, I'd like to test your strength as well. I excitedly flip through the pages of the compendium. What? Please, wait a moment. Does that mean you wish to fight me? From what I've heard, in certain cultures in your world, one lets one's fists do the talking. Perhaps you could think of it as a sporty, modern, and extreme way of greeting one another. I don't understand at all. You seem to have become strong beyond all recognition. I'd like to see your power for myself to broaden my horizons. Will you grant my shameless request? I still don't understand. But does this mean your wish will be fulfilled if I agree to fight you? If that's really what you want. Will you mind if I don't hold back? I couldn't ask for anything more. I, Elizabeth, will fight you with all the strength at my disposal. Now, let us begin. Ah, uh, settling matters through a show of force is simple, straight... Uh, pardon me, I said that once already. Alright, what's the over under beginning this time? Uh, I'm thinking like. Uh, 2080. 20 on me getting it. Just gotta beat the shit out of Argus a little bit. Having Thandals on my side is pretty nice. Wish sure I could do shit like this. And because Thandals is just broken as fuck, it's really kind of annoying how strong Elizabeth is. But at least I'm playing as her this time. Oh no, I guess don't shoot me with guns and do super moves on me. That would be most unfortunate. Don't keep doing it. No, please. Haha. <laughs> uh, you're so cool, I guess. Please don't hold back. Oh, there we go. 
This is our grand finale. I bring you Megidola. Ah yes, the Megadolon, and that, my friend, is why we never fought Elizabeth because it's annoying. It's a, well, it's an annoying fight. I brought it up many a times, but uh, I also just I would have seen that a bunch anyways. Maybe uh, that's also what happens a lot if you wear like the Omnipotent Orb for some things. You just get Megadolon. It's just sad. You are strong. I guess crouches down with a regretful expression. Oh no, I was surprised myself. It's been a while since I fought with all my power. I close my eyes and reminisce. Just as I had expected, she has grown more powerful than before. I guess is not human. She has an artificial body, making her a sort of mechanical maiden. She was originally created as a tool to accomplish a set goal with established abilities. But by gaining a heart, she forged her own destiny. She did this with the power that can only be gained by those with emotions. The power of bonds! Her nature shifted from one directed by others to one who chooses for herself. She was no longer merely acting, but living. The shift caused a miracle and she overcame her artificial origins to attain what could be called life. Some have had the talent of turning bonds into great strength by forming a contract through intense desire. We residents of the Velvet Room refer to this talent as the Wild Card, and it has at times changed the course of history. Even I, who served as a resident for a long time, only encountered a few with that power. She is one of them. I now have a wish of my own. Oh, it may take vast oceans of time for it to come true. Perhaps one day you will accompany me on the same journey. What do you mean? If our destinies truly do cross, you will eventually understand. Ix's expression shows that she still does not understand. But that is fine for now. Ah, by the way, how have your friends been? Huh? Oh, they're all well. Several of them are here right now. Suddenly, a staticky voice echoes from the broken monitor speaker, interrupting our conversation. It seems I was not thorough in my destruction. Ahem, testing, testing. <laughs> Finally getting through. Hey, you! The one who's not on the roster! Who are you? Why are you coming up the works? It's that bear. If you keep messing with my Grand Prix, I'll make you... I set the fingers on my right hand with a flourish. <laughs> the speaker explodes. I am sure the announcement will, will not or will bother us no more now. It seems I have finally finished it off. Oh my! Flames have suddenly burst from the speakers. How dreadful! That was 180% your doing. Such repeated meddling. It seems I have a bit of a score to settle with the host too. Well then, I will be going now. Please be careful. Oh wait. There is a rule in this tournament against the loser of a fight moving on. Is there? Well, considering that I entered myself into the tournament, I do not think you count as a defeated contestant. That is only conjecture, though. You entered yourself. Yet you're going to settle a score with a host for complaining about you? Huh. Details. I smile cheerfully in return and leave the area. Ah, truly, that was one of my better smiles. I cannot believe that even Elizabeth's son came to this world. <sighs> That's it! Her name was Elizabeth's son! I finally remember. Eventually, I reach the room known as the announcement room. When I approach the door, I sense power from within. It seems the real host is here, and not, some, not on some monitor. Uh, I haven't encountered that Persona user known as Sensei yet. But thinking about it, I would expect him to win his matches until reaching here. It may be easier to wait than to search aimlessly for him. Upon closer inspection, the door is slightly open. There are people inside. I sense two. No, three people. I cautiously sneak up to the door and peek inside. What a shame. You gave it a try, but there's no way anyone would understand you. Huh? That is that teddy bear imposter. The student council president is here too. It seems the false teddy bear's tone is much harsher than before. Has he been meeting with difficulties lately? When I look again at what's going on inside the room, a sinister aura swirls around General Teddy. 
a surprising transformation occurs. His silhouette reforms into a shapeless lump, which resolves into the figure of the council president girl. I am Shadow, the true self. Goodness, that false teddy bear was actually the girl's shadow. I see. It's true that suffering to this degree could cause a shadow to go berserk and affect its surroundings. The girl's true appearance has already been exposed. It seems she finally was able to face her original nature. Surprisingly, the enemy forcing the illusion upon her was her other self. I'm glad that she has awakened to her true self, but this is a shocking and drastic turn of events. At least one of them has to understand how I feel. Isn't that what you thought? The important part is that it's all your fault. That, that's not true! You want the everyday boys and girls to experience what you have to go through. You want to see close friends fight for their lives against each other. Because if they do that, then they might understand. You want to make them understand. That ain't true! It's alright then. You don't have to worry about that anymore. I'll take care of everything from here. I'll destroy anyone who doesn't understand you and comes to get in your way. Just like you once did. Please stop! That's all a lie! You're not me! <laughs> finally! You finally said it! I'm finally free! Yes! The power! The shadow has gone berserk. At this point, it can only be stopped solely by the original person. Worse, the shadow has no more reason to keep its host alive. If this continues... But a third person storms onto the scene just as I am about to intervene. Labrys! It's a young man in a school uniform. For a moment, I am utterly captivated. What powerful fire he has in his eyes. On a second look, I recognize his face from the video. As I recall, his name was Kingpin Yu. No, that's not right. Sister Complex you. No, no, that sounds even further from his actual name. Um, Narukami. Th that's right, it's you, Narukami. I won't let you hurt her anymore. If you're gonna keep rampaging, I'll fight you. Fine! Then you'll be the first to die! <laughs> the Shadow's attack hurls toward the young man. But he does not flinch and takes a fighting stance after smoothly evading it. Seeing his height and determination, I detect a distinct presence about him. That young man is a Persona user, too. Ah, and that's not all. The sensation is similar to when I encountered Aegis. Could his powers be? There's no doubt about it, it's the same as hers. He, too, is a Persona user whose awakened talent is that of the Wild Card. The Shadow launches its next attack at the young man. The battle axe it branches as a cluster of steel as long as she is tall. If he truly can wield those powers, he may be able to stop such an attack, but it's not a sure thing. This opportunity cannot be missed. This time, I enter the room and step between the two. What? Pardon me as I interrupt this scene. Who are you? <laughs> you! How? I set up walls so you couldn't pass through. How did you get here? So you couldn't pass through? What is it referring to? Oh, hmm, can we those invisible walls I bumped into from time to time? I suppose, thinking back, I did run afoul of such things along the way. But a little push was all it took to pass through them, so I barely paid them any heed. Such parlor tricks can get stuffed! I'm so glad we got to hear it one more time. <laughs> the shadow of the young man both look quite perplexed. What, what I said was so shocking. I take the opportunity to step towards the young man and look him straight in the face. Oh, are you perhaps the sensei that Teddy Bear spoke of? Someone who has awakened to the power of the wild card through Velvet Room's guidance. What? Wait, that blue outfit. Who are you? I flash him a smile and turn my gaze toward the girl collapsed nearby. I believe he had called her Labrys a moment ago. <laughs> I see. I feel that I have a good grasp on the situation now. Then can't you tell you're in the way? Get out of here! I cannot do that. I came to settle some business I had with you, the tournament's host. What business? 
To be blunt. Uh, hmm, what business was it? How the hell should I know? <laughs> that was harsh. It turns out that I do not care about such trifling details after all. My apologies. Please forget my mention of business. Actually, my search for a certain individual has unexpectedly concluded. So we're done here. Who said we're done? That's it! I'll kill you where you stand! Hmm, I wouldn't recommend it. If I may be so boastful, it would be a battle you stand no chance of winning. What? My words must have been so humiliating that the shadow's face flushes red and it gropes for words. I ignored in order to speak to the young man. It's nice meeting you, by the way. I am Elizabeth. Would it ring a bell if I mentioned that I am the one who governs power? You mean like Margaret? Oh, do you know my older sister? I see, no wonder. Stop ignoring me, bitch! I shield the young man behind me and turn towards the shadow. Please wait a moment. I must ask the one over there to leave this place before we resume. It's you who's going to leave! Oh, I was sure that I gave the proper warnings earlier. So it goes. Your fate is in the cards. I mean, say what you will about Elizabeth, but man, she she's just kind of funny. I, I, I love Elizabeth in the humorous way. Anyways, Shadow Lammers, uh, you know, we had this whole discussion about how I'm going to whoop your ass, and that is exactly what's going to happen here. So, just don't resist. Get that Thanos in there. You might as well get a grapple in here. Just get a little bit of that debuff on your, your side there. And we're finished here. The shadow falls to its knees, its will completely drained. I doubt it has strength left to attack us. This is me? The girl, still unable to stand, stares blankly at her own shadow. I turn around towards the young man. This P1 Grand Prix was most likely caused by the girl's shadow manifesting her suppressed anguish. But this young man tried to reach out to her, even at the risk of his own safety. And even after seeing proof that she was the one who caused that risk. Excuse me, but may I leave the rest of this to you? I'm ashamed to say so. A delicate persuasion is not my forte. I understand. I agree that you don't seem like you'd be too good at it. <laughs> the young man walks towards Labrys, who is still at a loss for words. I have yet to have a proper conversation with him, but I sense a certain trustworthiness in his strong steps. Miss President, or actually Labrys. I... what am I supposed to do? What difference does it make if I accept this? In the end... No one's gonna understand me anyway, right? It's true that others won't be able to easily understand your pain. But are you gonna give up after just one try at showing them? <laughs> one victory or loss doesn't matter. What matters is that you don't give up. That's what I think. I shouldn't give up? No. You can do this. You're not alone anymore. Lambert's eyes widen as if just realizing the brightness of the scenery before her. The young man waits patiently for his words to sink in. After some time, Labrys finally stands up and looks towards me. Hey, is this what you were talking about before? I am also not human, but who you are is for you to decide. That is the power of potential that everyone holds. Even for a machine, I believe that still holds true. <laughs> you could have just said so when we first met. Alas. I have always had some difficulty making myself understood. Come on now, you should go to her. Labrys's, Labrys faces her shadow once more at the urging of the young man.
is my persona. Congratulations! Yeah, you did well. Thanks. There's no need to thank us. It was all you. Seeing Lyra smile, I can't help but grin as well. But her relief only lasts for a moment before the strength drains from her body and she stumbles. Labrys! The young man hastily catches her. There's no need to worry. She must have reached the limits of her stamina. He props the unconscious Labrys down against a wall. The strength that binds hearts together. No matter how many times I witness it, its beauty never fades. May I borrow some of your time? The young man looks over his shoulder in surprise, but when our gazes cross, he turns as if understanding. Are you a resident of the Velvet Room too? Well, in a way. I have abandoned my duties at the moment in order to see through a desire of mine. What did you want with me? I calm myself before opening my mouth once more. In order for my wish to be granted, I require a power much greater than what I have. But it is most likely not power used to fight. It is something else. I wish to understand what that is. The power of the wild card that changes bonds into strength. I have a feeling that the key lies there. I don't really understand. But more bluntly, I wish for you to show me your potential. The young man considers everything I said, but eventually sighs before responding. I get it now. You don't mind? Would you back down if I said no? After what you said before, I don't think you'd back off that easy. <laughs> Too shame. I take a slightly defensive stance. There is no need to be lenient. I invite you to approach this battle as if you intend to kill me. I didn't think I could win any other way. Thank you. Well, here goes. Your fate is in the cards. Finally! All right, you, let's see what you got. The final fight, the final everything. This is it, we're almost done. <sighs> I shouldn't act too too excited. I mean, I still play Ultimax, but that will at least be not as annoying. <laughs> that will at least be uh, interesting, I suppose. But I mean, we're gonna play as Lizard right now, and that's always fun. Oh no, don't do that. Uh oh. There goes some Zeodyne. It's really loud. It's alright, come on, you. We're about to do this, okay? Man, what, what does. Like, I don't know what any of her skills are because I never play Elizabeth and I don't know anything. There we go. What's this? Oh, I see. Uh, I can't burst. That's unfortunate. Ow. Oh, God. <laughs> I almost just fucking died. <laughs> She's so strong. I see. You do indeed have great power. Even while saying so, I am conflicted and my expression clouds. It's true that he was strong. He ex expertly wields the power of the wild card. But thinking about it, that isn't what I wanted to learn. The power of the wild card doesn't stem just from one's skills in a fight. His strength comes from his knowledge that he cannot avoid fighting to gain his desire. That strength happens to manifest as a power in battle. What I want to learn has little to do with combat. Will I ever get closer to the root of the matter with this method? But even if I find that I can't, I don't see another way. I have measured all types of strength, great and small, as one who governs power. I feel suddenly anxious. Could it be that it's something I cannot understand? Will I never be able to understand as one distant from the workings of human society? Has it been impossible from the start for my wish to be fulfilled? I then notice a sound of footsteps. Hey, are you okay? Oh shit, dude, what happened to you? Yukon, are you alright? Senpai, hang in there! It seems that once the shadow who created this place was vanquished, the rules keeping everyone trapped were nullified. These must be the friends he formed bonds with. But... Yo! Did you do this? What did you do to Senpai? One of them turns his fierce eyes on me. You're so mean, miss! This is going too far! Who are you anyway? You better explain yourself! If you did this with malign intent, we won't let you leave here so easily. I don't think she'd be the one not leaving. <sighs> their anger at seeing their friend hurt. 
that was a new experience for me. Their bond gave birth to anger, grew into animosity, and that fury is now directed towards me. But the young man stands up. One more time. He requests this even though he's badly wounded. A rematch would seem to have only one possible outcome. What? Please, that is enough. I've already witnessed your strength. If this ends with my defeat, it doesn't count as me showing you my potential. But... You shouldn't jump to conclusions. I thought I said this once today. What's important is that you don't give up after one try. You have to hang in there. My friends that I haven't seen in a while are all here. I can't just wave the white flag! The moment the young man makes his declaration, a mysterious presence fills the area. What not? Flashbang. The presence surges with power and creates a whirlpool of light around him. Within the light, the young man's determination and drive instantly rekindle. What is that power? Is it the wild card he holds? I then notice the young man's friends are standing behind him in support, all of them fixing their gazes on me as I stand perplexed. The bond that they share in their very core is echoed in their eyes. I suddenly feel as if I am confronting a fearsome giant. I cannot believe I am seeing this. I find myself starting to back off. My footsteps are unsteady as I go. A small dip in the floor behind me, no more than a fingernail, throws me off balance. Uh. Surely I'm about to fall. But then unseen arms catch me. Are you alright? You're... In contrast to my utter bewilderment, she wears a calm smile. When I turn back to the young man, the surge of power has already dissipated. I kept myself sighing in relief. Even when I review my long memory, I can recall no occasion on which I had felt so overwhelmed before. What was that just now? Do you happen to know what this power is? I do not know the specifics, but... I guess also turns her gaze towards you and his friends. That must be the power of their bonds. The power that stems from not being alone. I don't know why, but... I feel like I understand when I'm watching them. The power of not being alone. It's a power that they all share. It isn't just his. Did their strong bonds turn his determination not to lose into an instant recovery for him? I am suddenly reminded of a conversation I once had with my sister. If something is impossible for them to accomplish alone, they will work together. His friends have even worked miracles at times. Those were the words I spoke to her. What's important is that you don't give up. It is a cliche to hear, but its wisdom is profound. I dismiss his potential judging by my standards. I almost gave up in the same way, thinking that I would be unable to understand. But he refused to allow that. His power proves that there is not only one standard. It is truly the strength found in numbers. So this is a bond. When I think about the guests I met who had formed bonds, I may have focused too much on those individuals. I never took much interest in who they bonded with or how those bonds were forged. What I should be studying isn't just him, but all of them together. Not the strength of a person, but of people. That may be the lesson. It seems I am starting to find hope. I nod in satisfaction. Today's festivities made for quite a wonderful Grand Prix. Considering that there have been some games, I should be going, if you'll all excuse me. I turn to make my exit. Huh? Wait a sec, you haven't explained yourself yet! You haven't even told us your name! It's Elizabeth! Hey! Back here! What are you all happy for? Who was she? Well, the odds are low that she was the mastermind behind this case. Enough about her! Senpai's more important! We'll get you out of here in no time, so hang in there, Senpai! Teddy, get a stretcher ready! Th huh? What are you standing around for? Move! <laughs> Uh, guys, I'm not exactly critically injured, you know. I think it's wonderful. You're... Seeing you surrounded by friends reminds me of a certain someone. A certain someone? There is no need to worry, everyone. His wounds are not serious. He is merely exhausted. Oh, thank goodness. Wait, um, who are you? I could have left by a shorter route, but I returned to the school's front gate and looked back at the school. 
The faces of the people I parted with a moment ago were called to mind. Amongst them is that young man's face. I only faced him briefly, yet I recall him with surprising vividness. I'm sure that he will continue to increase his strength of heart. By dancing? It is a given with so many friends. I am a little bit envious. I turn the pages of the compendium and draw a magic circle in the air. Well then, farewell. I soundlessly pass through it and leave as if melting into the scenery. I close my eyes and my thoughts drift into the past. Elizabeth? Elizabeth, are you listening? Huh. You seem lost in thought like that frequently of late. Could this mean that you finally began to be troubled over things, like a normal person? How scathing of you, as usual. Believe me, sister, I am not as bad as you. I just want to say I'm going to miss this voice of, Liz of uh, Margaret, sorry. Ugh. What's the matter? My dear sister, I want to tell you a fairy tale. Hmm? What's this about? In our world, at the far reaches of the Sea of the Soul, there stands a large door. A soul which devoted itself to sealing that door slumbers there. Why did it do such a thing? That soul is risking itself to prevent those who have lost sight of life's brilliance from luring the world to self-destruction. It has become the guardian of the door, of the whole world in fact. That is a very sorrowful story. My dear sister, do you think I can save that person? Hmm? I thought it was a fairy tale. It may be impossible alone, but what if I joined forces to do it? This person's friends are capable of miracles at times. This person you speak of, is it... I hope you're not planning to... Oh, don't be silly, my dear sister. I told you, it was only a fairy tale. <sighs> oh, to a certain degree, all of your stories are like fairy tales. I don't know what's troubling you, but be sure that you don't neglect your duties. <laughs> when I open my eyes again, I am in the sea of the soul, a world where countless bright lights shine like a nebula. I begin singing a song, but now that I'm here again, I feel a hint of loneliness. I smile inwardly at myself. What happened today was very fruitful for me, though it came with a certain realization. I still don't have anyone in the world outside of the Velvet Room that I wish to form a bond with. My lack of a hunger for such things may have prevented me from understanding. No, that's not quite right either. Lack of hunger? That's not it. In truth, it was within my power, but I was turning my gaze away from it. After all, I didn't begin this journey only to find the means to defeat that monster. I thought by defeating it, I could see him again. <laughs> to think I was unconsciously afraid of something and keeping my distance from it. That is quite a surprise. The mechanical girl, the young man today, and my old guest all had their own desires and resolve from the start. I should make myself just as resolved if I, may, if I am to achieve my desire as well. I will face it unblinkingly and accept it. I will admit that the loneliness in me arose from leaving my old residence. The sick feeling of loneliness will surely torment me and cause me grief forever. But if I harden my resolve to allow for embracing that pain, I am certain that my yearning heart will yield great power. Bonds. The other half of being alive along with death. Just as death gives life its shine, I am sure loneliness will shed new light on the question of bonds. And that is when I will obtain the power of bonds in the truest sense. Certainly, I will not achieve that miracle alone. Though I cannot defeat that monster now, I may in time gain the power to truly erase it. He must have felt that hunger as well. That is why he tried to protect his bonds with his life, leading him into the universe. I smiled to myself again. As one who leads others, I have only now gained enlightenment about the true meaning of bonds. And at that moment, A single car drifts down before my eyes. Oh! Hovering before me, like a butterfly fluttering its wings, is the card of the fool. It bursts into pearls of light on my hand. To think the day would come where I would behold my own arcana and not that of a visitor's. The fool. It represents freedom, purity, possibility, and... And 
the beginning of a journey. It may be that my journey has finally truly begun. The fool, hmm? Well, I am aware that I still do foolish things. I give her eyes smile and look up. My gaze is fixed on what lies ahead. It's an enormous door that looms like a small mountain in the center of the void. Please wait for me. One day I shall surely see my wish come true. I briskly turn on my heel away from the door. My walk begins. Velvet, oh velvet. My bright song will no longer have mournful undertones. My master has a large nose. I have yet to determine a sure path. There's no assurance that my wish will come true. And whether I will truly make some sort of connection with those I encounter today isn't certain either. But I have hope now. And that is what lets me go on. This time, I can head towards the future I desire without losing my way. And so yeah, that is the final story, the Elizabeth story, done. And yeah, I, I talked about this in my Persona 4 Golden, uh, the, the final bonus episode after the Elizabeth, or the Margaret fight. Because uh, Margaret talks about Elizabeth, you know, being like, oh, there's a dude I want to say, a boy I want to save. So yeah, so Elizabeth now has the power of the wild card. Whether or not anything's going to happen with that, who knows? Uh, I kind of hope it doesn't, but at the same time, it could be an interesting story in itself. That's besides the point. <laughs> so yeah, thank goodness that Elizabeth's story is just a short, fun, funny little thing. But yes, that is Persona 4 Arena. And yeah, I know it doesn't say 100% complete on the story thing, it's just because I haven't picked the other options in Kanji's story. I didn't pick all the second options in Yu's story, and I didn't pick the two forking or the other forking path for post Akihiko joke fight. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Anyways, there are a few things I'd like to showcase before we watch the credits, so let's go jump to that. So the first thing I want to show off is just how funny I think it is when you go back to like a hard drive based system like the PS3. Uh, it takes a long time for the game to start up because if I just started this game up on my PS5 or my PC, it's just an instantaneous thing. It's just kind of like, and it's all just done. But uh, as you can see, I'm still talking. It's probably it was probably it loaded almost that whole time. And I just find that funny. Now, the second thing I want to show off is that the versus screen is different in the original arena. You know, what we're hearing in the Let's Play was the Ultimax version of that, like, getting ready to fight thing. So here's what the other one sounds like. I like the little static it has at the end there. It kind of <laughs> makes sense with, like, how it zooms in on stuff and the static goes. But anyway. Also, see here what the original music was for the Final Smash? Why would they ever change it from this? I guess I'm changing this back for the Ultimax playthrough. Let's end this. Thousand time while I'm moving. And now it's time for the credit song of Persona 4 Arena, which is Now I Know, composed by Itsushi Kitajo and sung by Shihoko Harata. Now, I really don't have much to say as far as this goes. Uh, I, I kind of talked about a lot of my feelings as the game went along, but uh, let's start with some other things first. If there's one thing I like in any project, it is to kind of come out of it learning something or improving something, whether it's, you know, behind the scenes or something that's front facing. And while I'm still really trying to figure out like what the best situation can be, solution for my audio stuff is going to be, I feel like I improved a little bit in that regard. I'm not really 100% sure on that, but I don't know. I feel like I'm getting slightly better as a, with that as I go along. One thing I know for sure, though, is that if you go back to like some of my Persona 4, like the later Persona 4 Gold and stuff, and especially, I, I want to say it was like Mitsuru story in, in Arena here, a lot of the high end is like, it, it just kind of sounds like, I don't know, like distorted or something, like there's something going on there. And I solved that issue. Uh, so in case anyone is, is watching this who also like record stuff with OBS or streams, do yourself a favor. If you don't have iTunes, uh, go look up the core audio uh, encoder 
that like came with some of the older versions of iTunes. You can find a download link to it if you search it up. But like, it is a better, high quality version of the AAC encoder, which completely solved my problems of the recordings having some distortion and stuff going on at the high end. So very much recommend that. And as far as the song goes, you know, I, I made mention of it in some episode during Labrisky and her persona, but this is the song, like this is the full version of the song that plays during the Labrys deceptive their shadow. As far as my thoughts on Arena as a whole, now look, I'm not going to say no to the investigation team getting back together. Love to see it. Love those characters. But I am very much uh, unenthralled with playing the same story like ten times. I do think it's a fine enough story overall, though. Like, I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's just like the additional story mode to a fighting game that they kind of had to do. It's like, oh, it's Persona characters. We, 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 this is when Atlas was was really like starting to get to the the, the cow's udders, and they're like, we need to fucking milk the goddamn shit out of Persona Four. You know what? For that, I'm happy. I've talked about the flanderization of the characters, and uh, some of them are way worse than others. Looking at Teddy, uh, Akihiko definitely has his moments. But other than that, I think the characters are all still pretty well themselves. Uh, Labrys as a character is is cool. I, I you know more robots. That's that's cool with me. Uh, she's she's unique enough that she doesn't really just she's not like oh look it's just like Igus, but it's 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 like oh you know she's, she's related to Igus because Igus just has every sister. But you know it's 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 separated enough towards like okay cool like this like Labrys is her own thing. Now would I recommend you go out and play the story of this? Not really. You, you like. You could pick your favorite characters after unlocking Labrys' story and playing through that to like unlock the full story. Just like play your favorite characters and just leave the rest alone because you really don't need to do that to yourself. That being said, I am happy I did this because I do enjoy. I, I do enjoy me some Persona Four related things, but thankfully, as I've mentioned already a couple times, uh, Ultimax is a bit more engaging story-wise, and it'll be fun to do that. But I'm going to stop blabbering now. Uh, I'm just going to let the rest of the credits play out. So you can leave at this point if you wish, because I'm signing off. But if you want to enjoy the rest of the song, go ahead. Uh, thanks for watching, and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax starts on Monday. And then it's time to dance, baby, and I can't wait for that. This program was brought to you by the following sponsors.